Sorry, excuse us, having car trouble? <laughs> Wish I could tell you, but I am in an R8. <laughs> In this episode, we are reviewing a 2009 yes. Audi R8. It's old. It's yeah, a little old. It's little, 10 years. A little long in the tooth. 10 years old. We're doing this because this is part of a series about budget supercars. Yeah, the last this, one we did was the i8. Yes. This is definitely a budget supercar. Yeah. Um, right now on Car Gurus, I just checked, with about 25 or 30,000 miles, like this has, is going for about sixty-five, seventy thousand dollars $70,000. So on the one hand, pricey for a nine, 10 year old car. Yeah. But for sure, its original cost was what? Its original cost with the automatic, like this has, the S Tronic automatic, was $135,000. So less than half the original price. Yes. So in 10 years, this is depreciated by a little over 50%. Okay. So the quest for this episode is this a better budget supercar than a used? 2014 BMW i8. And that is what, the answer to that question is what we're hopefully going to figure out Let's by the end of this out. video. Three, two, one. Yeah, that's a bit of a delay. Oh, yeah, it does, it does delay, but there we are at 60. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> the engine was complaining there. If it shifted faster, that would have felt a lot quicker, I think. Yeah, I mean, I was doing that manually, yeah. to be fair. I, I didn't have it in purely automatic. I yeah. was shifting the paddles myself. Yeah. But there still is that delay. That's what um, I mean, yeah. It's like when you hit the paddles, it takes a second. It feels like it's like a full second for the shift to actually happen. Oof. Which is slow. Like, yeah. that is really not good yeah it takes a lot of the fun out of it because it's like you're not it's not really it manual doesn't, it doesn't feel super precise yeah i really like how this car looks i do too it's very refined and classy looking yeah i think it's not like too flashy like a lamborghini or a ferrari but you still know that it's cool yeah it's like a tony stark car. i mean there's a reason they put tony stark in one of right these in, what iron man i forget it's which one techie was. especially the newer ones yeah. are very techie and like you can't really tell the difference most people like 90 percent of people are not going to be able to tell the difference between this a 2009 and a 2019 no and they'll model. certainly not be able to tell you that this is a 10 year old model right yeah if you were to show this to somebody they will not say this is 10 years and sixty five thousand dollars no they would think that it's new and like over a hundred yeah for sure. Jinx, you have a long-term relationship. Yeah. Oh, yikes. Anyway. <laughs> four point what? 4.3? It's 4. a 4.2 liter V8. It's that, gorgeous. Yeah. It's so gorgeous and pretty back there. I love the, the back side with the, the headlights. Or not the headlights. You the did rear, it again. The I rear know, headlights. The rear, the <laughs> tail lights. It just looks mean and aggressive. And from the front, it really looks mean, too. But also kind of understated, which is so nice. I do like the dash, it's got like a, I don't want to say that's leather, I don't know what that is, it's like a cushiony material. Yeah, it's a little interesting. This does um, feel dated yeah. on the inside, and I feel like that's an interesting thing to bring up, because on the exterior, it doesn't feel dated. Yeah. It looks modern, Yeah. but on the interior, it's definitely dated. There are there's, some clues. There's, a, there's this. Case in point. Yeah, yeah primarily. A CD, a CD changer. A CD player. <laughs> This screen is dated. Yeah, that's, it's real primitive. And uh, you, obviously, like it's yeah. ten years old. Like yeah. it's not like a knock against it. No, it just looks like it looks like computer BIOS or something. It's just yeah. kind of old. The dash though is brilliant. Yeah, I really, really love the dash. The dash feels modern, looks clean, feels smooth. It's, it's simple. It's elegant. You got chrome lined gauges. It shows you what you need and nothing else. I really like that. Yes. It's not the most practical of interiors. It's a tiny, no. tiny, tiny real little glove box. You do have cup holders in this, yeah. which is so nice, you actually. You technically have a triple cup holder. I don't know what on earth could fit in this tiny <laughs> middle cup holder. But it's there. But it's there. I think this... I wonder if that's for like, if you took an actual coffee cup and that's for the handle. That's dumb. Who would take like a coffee cup in this thing? It would spill all over the place. Yeah, this thing is violent. Very small. You have a bench back here. No seats. Obviously, it's a two-seater. I back there. I don't know. We can give it a shot. <laughs> we can know. throw you back there see how comfortable you get there. Yeah. We already tried with the front. We tried with the front and uh, it didn't go so well. Do 
steering feel is very heavy. Yeah. Like I do think it, I mean, this fits into the handling. This is all wheel drive. Yeah. So it grips the road very precisely. It does, yeah. When you're going around corners, it feels so firmly planted onto the ground. It's great. I love that. Yeah. If there's no one at this roundabout, we'll see. Oh, nope. heck. Gonna get, gonna get prevented. There's Dang too many people it. out. It's too nice of a day. I know. It's a beautiful day. <laughs> This is a uh, single clutch transmission yeah. also. So dual clutch automatics weren't really a thing and certainly not a, a common thing 10 years ago. So even with the paddle shifters, when you when you shift, it's going to take a second to, to change gears. Yeah, and it's, I, I noticed that when, yeah. when you hit the paddle, it takes like one second. Oof. It feels like it takes about a second when you hit the paddles to shift. Yeah, but the i8 was kind of the same way. And that was more recent. Yeah, it's it's slow. Um, yeah. I would rather, and what, what was interesting about this model, so now they don't create um, R8s with a manual transmission any longer. You can only get the uh, the automatic S-Tronic transmission right now. Mm. When this was in 2008, 2009, you could get a manual transmission. Yeah. And the manual transmissions cost $10,000 less than the automatics. So they were 115. Go for that. Yeah, they were $115,000 yeah. compared to the $125,000 price of these. Yeah. That's crazy to me that anyone would buy an automatic that performs just as poorly if not worse than your average person shifting gears manually. Yeah, this it's it's very curious. Yeah, for 10 grand less, yeah, I'd take this. I uh, yeah, for sure. It's kind of like makes me question if this was a supercar. Does it look like a supercar? Yeah. Yes. Does it perform like a modern day supercar? No. No. It doesn't match up with the supercars of today. And again, that's to be expected. It's 10 years old. Of course, it's not going to be able to compete with current gen supercars. Yeah. I mean, that's that's the thing. When you're doing a, a, an episode like this where you're dealing with a car that's very old. I mean, at this point, 10 years old. 10 for, years old for, is very old. It's, it's very old for a car. Yeah. It's not gonna stack up to its peers. It's yeah. not gonna stack up to like the next rung down, usually. Yeah. So. But again, for that budget, for $65,000, yeah. I don't know, man, this is pretty cool. <laughs> I will say, when I get out of this car and look at it, I'm like, yeah, it's worth it. And then when I'm driving it around, I'm like, eh, then the doubt starts to creep in. Yeah, I'd agree with that completely. Because I, I know for that price, a Camaro ZL1 is about that price. And the ZL1 has like, 600 horsepower Gosh. and a manual transmission and a zero to 60 of three and a half seconds and a convertible yeah like yeah, it's a lot there's a lot of boxes checked there yeah but it looks like a camaro and it doesn't look like a cool r8 yeah. on the outside In the last so, 10 years we've had a, a quite a horsepower war that's happened you've got camaro or we've got ford and, and chevy just trading blows over who can one up the other we're up to like 700 horsepower in the newest models the like, newest mustang yeah. yeah the gt500 yeah which the gt500 is probably from what i've read going to be priced around 70 or 80 which is like this again this yeah. is like 65 or seventy thousand dollars. so uh, in if, if it were that like if i were forced to choose between the 2020 um gt500 and this i yeah there's no competition. I would take the GT500. I haven't even driven it. Yeah, I would. I would pay I would take for the it GT500 and have to wait a year to get it before I would buy this. Yeah. That is not to rag on this car. This is a cool car. It just doesn't stack up to a 2020 model year, right? High-powered performance car. This gets 12 miles a gallon in the city. Oof. Gets 19 miles a gallon on the highway for a combined MPG of 15 miles per gallon Aye. on average. That's rough. That's real rough. You'd expect that though. Yeah. This is a supercar. It's thirsty. It's a thirsty it's boy. A thirsty boy. Yeah. It takes premium gas too. And premium gas. Mm. So you know this is. Uh, it's gonna punch you in the wallet. I mean, yeah. e even if you you buy this at the depreciated value, it's an expensive car to maintain. And that being said, it's an expensive car to maintain, but not compared to rivals. Yeah. The whole point of the R8 ever since it was first created, and it's still the point today, is it's like a daily drivable supercar. Mm -hmm. This is a supercar that is somewhat practical, that is daily drivable, that's comfortable. It's refined. It's refined. You don't have to deal with a lot of like BS. Yeah. It's in like Lamborghinis or Ferraris that are more expensive to maintain, that have like outrageous maintenance prices yeah. this is more reasonable and affordable and it's comfortable it's not a brute like you can drive this thing around we're driving it and we're not getting bounced into oblivion with these potholes yeah. and stuff it is comfy to drive it's the suspension doesn't feel like super tight it doesn't feel like you're on a track and just getting like thrown around just when you're driving on the streets no i'm hesitant to say 
car's not that great. I wouldn't say it's not that great. It is great. This is a great car. Yeah, hundred percent great car. Still, for it's that price. just for the price of like sixty-five or seventy grand. And here's the thing that's funny: brand new Audi R8. They have uh, different models. Yeah. They have a uh, rear-wheel drive model that costs one hundred thirty-five thousand. Okay. They have an all-wheel drive model that starts at one sixty-five. Wow. Then they have the R8 Plus all-wheel drive, which is about two hundred for one hundred thirty-five thousand dollars. The new one, I think, is a steal. Yeah. I think that is such a bargain. Would you say that's a better deal yes. than this? I already know what yeah. you're going to say. Yeah. Yes. I think for a brand new with a, at 135 that's a better deal than this at 65 To be fair, I think this is the best budget supercar we've driven so far. On a budget, yes. But that's the thing. Is this really a supercar? Yeah. Because if you say this is a supercar, then you say, okay, well, the Camaro ZL1 and the Mustang GT500 are better than this. They oh, yeah. perform better, they have more horsepower, and they're about the same amount of money. Are those supercars? And the common... I don't know. Most people would say no. They're sports cars, they're muscle cars, but like that's not fair. Yeah, not really. Yeah. This it was a supercar for the time yeah. that it came out in 2009, but is it a supercar still? Like, basically the philosophy I'm trying to get across here is, does a supercar get to a point where it's not a supercar Yeah, anymore? it loses its status. That's an interesting idea. Yeah. Like, if you got a PC, you built, like, top-of-the-line PC in 2013. Yeah. And then you went forward five years, six years, to now. It's underpowered. It, yeah, it's underpowered. Yeah. Is it still a super powerful PC? Of course you'd say it's not. Yeah. So... So why do we say with supercars that, that this still is a still a supercar? I would say it's a veteran supercar. It's a supercar who's over the hill. It's... Yeah. So, in today's market, it is a supercar? No. It was. Yeah. So I will say this is not a supercar. Yeah. All right, so with uh, everything we've just said, we're gonna get into the ratings now. Yes. We've already got our clipboard, El clip everything we're gonna do. So to begin, we're gonna start with performance. How do you feel? Uh, six. I'm gonna rate it a little higher, just because zero to 60 of 4.4 seconds is still fast. And I think the handling is good, but it suffers from the clutch and the, or the transmission. Transmission's trash. Yeah, the honestly. transmission's bad. Takes forever to shift on the paddles. I'm gonna go slightly higher on a 6.5. Okay, that sounds fair. Ah, uh, no, I'm gonna go with a seven. Oh, yeah, that's pretty high. I will do seven All right. because I rated the Miata a six. Oh, <laughs> well, and this is better than the Miata. Uh, <laughs> Practicality. Uh, four. Four. Yeah. Because it's got three cup holders, technically. You do, I don't know what that is. Yeah, you do have cup holders. You have tiny amounts of storage space, but you do have a decent amount in the front. Yeah. I'm going to go with the 3.5. Another thing I'm giving it a little extra for is because of your visibility. It's amazing. It's good. For a supercar. For a supercar, but it's still a supercar, and it takes premium, and it gets horrible fuel economy. Yeah. So I'm going with a 3.5. Yeah, that's I don't, I don't think it's super practical still. <laughs> that is fair. Um, next up comes value, which is slightly iffy. Yeah. I'm going to give it a four and a half. Four and a half yeah. from JT. You know, I think I'm going to stick with that exact same, actually. Nice. I think a four and a half is pretty warranted. It's nice. It's cool that like you get the looks and everything for yeah. $65,000 with this used. Still a used car with like 30,000 miles on it, though, for sixty five grand, it's And it's pricey. 10 years old. I don't know. Cool factor, which is high. That's what's next. Pretty solid. I think it's pretty good. This gets a lot of attention. People do think it's really cool. I think it's really cool looking at it. I totally agree. Uh, I'm gonna it. go with a seven. Ah, yeah, I was gonna go with seven for me. Too. Yeah. All right. So sevens for both of us on cool factor. Quality is next. Which it, this is dated. It's old. But uh, nothing is broken. But nothing is broken. That's true. It's, it's always hard rating like older cars on their quality. Yeah. This is miles better than the 25 year old. Dodge Viper. Yes, definitely. And Way I'd better. I'd say probably on par with the i8. I'd probably go with a 5. It's right in the middle. It's even. I feel like it's fair yeah. because certainly even like new cars that cost like thirty dollars or $40,000 have more advanced yeah. features inside, of course. But this does feel luxurious with the Alcantara and the, uh, the leather seats. I'm going to give it a 5.5 just because I am... I am genuinely amazed that nothing is broken on this thing over yeah the, over the last it is second. impressive next up is fun factor all right that's our final box here that we need to figure out which is reasonably high you know i'd probably compare it again like we've been a lot to mustangs 
Dang but it, it does have all-wheel drive, and it does feel much more planted, and the handling is better than a Mustang, and it's as fast as a Mustang, and it looks cooler than a Mustang, and, yeah. and it sounds better than a Mustang. It does sound great. Don't cross the road there, person. That's a bad idea. Anyway, <laughs> all that said, fun factor. I'm going to go with a 7. I'm going to go... For me. I, I think it deserves that 7. I'm going to go with a 6. 6? Yeah. A little harsh there. It is a little harsh, but like the, <laughs> the problem with this is... If I'm going to pay 65 grand for a 10-year-old car, I want it to be a little bit more fun. Like I it's, guess. It's, it's fun, but I had just as much fun in the Miata, probably more. And that's half the price, and brand new. Way less than, well, actually, yeah, with the RF, with the RF. It's, it's about half the price yeah. of this. Yeah. So, for me, that's, that's a challenge, rating it super highly. Because price is always going to be a factor for how much fun you're having, for me. For me, fun is more about, like fun yeah with like fat like speed and performance it's also about how it looks in the theater yeah and the noise and all that factors into it for me that's totally that's fair. why i went with a seven yeah 33.5 okay. is our average score out of 60 right yeah 33.5 out of 60 how that compares to other cars we have reviewed so far interestingly we rated this 0.5 points higher than the uh, 2017 uh, Mazda Miata RF. Just a smidge. Just a smidge. Wow. We rated this barely higher than the Miata. I think that's fascinating. That is fascinating, because on the one hand, the Miata's half the price. On the other hand, this is a 10-year-old car that just beat the um, a modern car. Mm -hmm. But then the Mustang was... We rated the, the Mustang point... 0.5 higher than this. And okay. I think the reason why we did that was because of its better practicality in its back seats. Yeah. Uh, and uh, what we were comparing this most to, the BMW i8, we rated the BMW i8 at 39.5. So six entire points, higher. six whole points higher than this. And I think that's right. Yeah, and I think that earns it because I would definitely take an i8 over this. Yeah, 100%. Anyway, that's all we've got for this episode. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. This, was, this car was pretty fun. I think this is the first time I was about right with how I felt about the car coming into it and how I feel now at the end. Would you say about the same? Yeah, I'd say totally the same. I, I feel pretty much exactly how we did when we started. Cool. So that's it for the R8. Uh, 10 years old, still stands up pretty well. Not the best budget supercar. Audi, if you're watching, hook your boys up with more modern R8s. We'd love to compare them directly to this and see how they stack up. If this is your first time watching, thank you. Uh, we hope you stick around and get out of my way. <laughs> we hope you stick around and watch the next episode. And until then, See you guys next time. Peace, guys. I'm not so good at like the ending yeah. Uh, monologue. Yeah, I just, just wing it. Sometimes it comes out better than others. Don't forget to smash that mother yeah. like button. <laughs> I want you to ravage that like button. Destroy it. <laughs> Take it. <laughs> smash it on the ground. Destroy it. Eviscerate it. it. Kill its entire family. Its family. Oh my God. Kill it. <laughs> Take his soul. Uh, Take that bit on his soul. body. Uh, and leave a thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know that the Toyota Corolla is the most sold vehicle of all time? Like the most, the most sold. Joe. 40 million Joe. units. I can't, I can't Joe. believe, I can't believe that. Joe. That's incredible. Joe. Oh my God. Curiosity Stream is the world's first streaming service for people who actually like to learn stuff. They have thousands of documentaries and nonfiction titles from some of the world's best filmmakers. If you like our show, you'll love their speed category. It's got a ton of content on cars and other things that go fast. We've recently partnered with CuriosityStream to help build Nebula, our new streaming service. Nebula is a streaming video platform built by and for independent creators. Because we all appreciate how supportive our fans are, CuriosityStream is offering a free Nebula subscription with every purchase of a year-long CuriosityStream membership. With this bundle, you get the best of both worlds. CuriosityStream is home to high production value documentaries and nonfiction work, whereas Nebula is a place for educational YouTubers to try new things and experiment with different formats, things the YouTube algorithm would punish us for. CuriosityStream loves independent creators and wants to help us grow our platform, so they're offering Grand Test Auto fans free access to Nebula when you sign up at curiositystream.com GTA. When you sign up for CuriosityStream, you get instant access to thousands of nonfiction titles, and you'll get to watch a bunch of new episodes from Grand Test Auto months before they hit YouTube, plus lots of other great Nebula originals. By signing up for CuriosityStream, you'll be helping not only GTA, but the entire educational community, as we work together to build a place where we can create exciting new content that just wouldn't be possible on YouTube. Give it a try by signing up using the link below. We promise you'll love it.